And uh, let's welcome, I know we have a lot of people at, at home. I know there's, it's, it's the storms and there's sickness everywhere and blah, blah, blah. So let's welcome them. Thanks for being here. And uh, glad you're tuning in this week. Uh, before we dig in, by the way, last week, we wrapped up a little series uh, that's very fitting for this year called Engaging Politics Without Embarrassing Jesus. And that whole series is now online. You can go to our YouTube channel. We have a podcast on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, santacruzbible.org. You can also go, but highly recommend if you want to check that out or if you need to revisit that as the election draws closer, uh, that's a great resource for you. And uh, there's actually a lot of encouragement and inspiration sitting in all that place is just for you. So take advantage of that. So now I want to thank all of you to kind of start off um, this this week because uh, this weekend actually marks, it was kind of crazy, it marks me, me being here three years as the lead pastor of Santa Cruz Bible Church. Isn't that crazy? Um, thanks for those that clapped and then for those who just went like, like that, I appreciate that too. Anyway, so um, it's been, no, it's been like, it's, it, this is a milestone, like three years is a big deal. Uh, it, and I've been reflecting on the last three years a lot this week. It kind of got emotional about it a little bit because I, I don't know if you've ever turned around an organization, but turning around a church is an assignment that is filled with adversity and challenges. It is way harder than it looks. I totally understand why people that, you know, that, I, I get it. Like, it's very, very, very difficult. And I have grown a lot in that process. I would say I am probably a better person or a better pastor than I was three years ago with a lot, a lot, a lot of room to grow in, in that. So it's been kind of a, 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 it's been a crazy three years. But what's funny is our entire church has been through this journey together. And in reality, we're a better and healthier church than we were three years ago. Now, we're not perfect, okay? But all we're doing is just trying to push forward to what God has planned for us. Everybody around you uh, and watching online, they have struggles. They have had some wins. They've had some losses. They've had some scars. We've all been there. You're sitting amongst a lot of people who've been through a lot in life. And if you're looking for perfect people to be around or just you prefer angry religious people, you are at the wrong place. Okay, uh, that's not us. Uh, sorry to disappoint. We are just a group of wonderfully imperfect people uh, who rely on God's grace every single day because that's really all we have to our credit, right? And, um, and if you're new with this, or this is the first time, there is a phrase you'll hear around here every once in a while. And that phrase is hope for everyone. You'll hear that every once in a while. That's our vision. That's kind of the battle cry of Santa Cruz Bible Church, right? And if we made hoodies and bumper stickers, that's what they'd say, right? Hope for everyone, right? And, and if you, we, we really believe that we want to be a place where everyone can find hope in Jesus. And we want to be a place where everyone can find a place to belong, uh, find a place to help others, and maybe even help in their community, and the truth is, everyone matters to God, so they matter to us. That's just, that's kind of what, the, it put it in the most simple way. We're for Santa Cruz. We're for the people of Santa Cruz, right? But everyone is a word that everyone struggles with. Because sometimes that means people that you disagree with. Sometimes that means people that you don't like. That means people you don't understand. And I'm going to be honest with you, church is a lot easier when it's homogenous, right? When it's us four and no more, so hit the door, right? And, that, and that's, how a lot of, that's how a lot of folks like it, right? It's just kind of me, and people look like me and like me, and I like, you know, and you're not like us. Get out, right? But that's a country club, not a church, okay? Amen. Two different things, okay? And, you know, the cross of Jesus— is for every age, race, gender, background, gender identity or expression, economic status, physical or mental condition, stage of life, you name it, okay? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know how other things to tell you that like the cross of Jesus is literally for everyone. You know what's interesting? John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. That word in the Greek is cosmos. Do you know what's in a cosmos? A lot universes like that's a lot okay that's a lot of things so that even means the martians right we need to be kind to the martians i'm kidding anyway so but the thing is is that whether you're hungover or barely hanging on at all you got a spot here you belong here and now i now, i don't want to describe it as we're just kind of an island of misfit toys okay i don't think i don't think that's it either 
But misfits are welcome here. Like we're, we're all like that. In, in 1 Timothy 4.10 is a verse that I always come back to. It's something that to remember as a church. And this is what it says. This is why we work hard and continue to struggle for our hope is in the living God who is the savior of all people and particularly of all believers. So everything that we work so hard to do as a church, the struggles that we face, the things that we go through, we do it because we believe in the hope of Jesus. And, and, and that's what that is. We're all here because of God's grace and we're happy to share that grace with everybody. And, and that's what we're about. Now, some of you are like, okay, Matt, like, well, what does that have to do with me? Like, I get it. Nice vision. Woo, great. Um, why are we talking about this? Is this going to become some kind of infomercial? Like, is this, like, are we selling something? Like, I don't understand. Like, why are we talking about this, okay? This is why we're talking about this, because everyone needs a place. And this is including you and me. So you can put you in this too. You need a place in your life where you can belong and grow spiritually. Doesn't have to be here, could be anywhere, but you need that place. You need people in your life who will encourage you and pray for you and who care about spiritual things, like that are okay with having those kind of conversations. Maybe you need somewhere to heal because you've been, you feel deserted or damaged by bad church experiences. Unfortunately, that's a lot of people. And they come here to kind of heal from that. You need a place where you can get involved and help other people. You need a place where you can give and support good things that are happening. You need a place that stretches your faith and stretches your perspective so that you just don't come in and, and feel like you're getting patted on the back every week, right? You need a place where you're growing and stretching, a place where you can feel the grace of God and share that grace with other people. That's, that's what we're trying to do here, but we, we, I genuinely believe that's a genuine need that everybody has. And if you'll give me a few minutes, I want to invite you to not just come in and sit in a service or watch a service online. I want to invite you to be involved and invested in a community of faith because I believe it is a valid need that we all share. Now, in other words, here's what I'm telling you. I'm inviting you to stop going to church and be a part of a church. Because, and I'm not kidding when I say this. It's very cliche, but it's true. If you're a part of a church, it will change your life. It, it really, really will. It makes a big difference in your life. Well, now why is that? Well, because here's a simple fact about all of us. No one wants to go through life alone, and everyone wants to know that their life made a difference right? And if you are invested or involved in a community of faith, it is a key that unlocks two doors at the same time. It unlocks community and purpose. In other words, you find people to walk with in your life, and you find a purpose to walk into in your life. Now, what do I mean when I say these two words, involved and invested? Very easy to remember. I hope you can remember those. But what do I mean by those two words? Well, let me start with involved, okay? Being involved means giving your time and talents to help someone. Now, I know some of you are already checked out. Oh, well, I don't have time or talent, so I hope you catch me on the next one, All right? But don't write me off yet, okay? You can give your time and talents to help someone in a church or out in the community. In fact, the service that you're attending or you're watching right now, it takes a whole lot of people to do this. Uh, it's not just our staff. We don't just show up and make it all happen. It's a whole big team of people that helps in any way, in every way. If you're attending on our campus, we're going to go out a little bit and, and do this little thing called Connect Sunday and meet and greet. You're going to meet a lot of the people that make this thing happen. But it's a team, and what they do is they get together and help in every way to make sure your kids have a good experience, that there's coffee if you need it, that the bathroom is clean, that there's a live stream up that you can watch, that there's lyrics so you can sing along and not get at the songs, which is kind of fun to watch people do, but still, we don't want you to have to do that, okay? That there's help and prayer if you need it. And, and I'm talking like this list goes on and on and on and on. 
all because we're all driven by one thing. We want everyone to experience Jesus. Which in any way that we can help make that happen, even in the small things, the big things, the medium-sized things, whatever they are, we want to help do that. And we also serve our local community, and I'm going to talk about that in just a minute, but here's what, this is what I want to say. When your life becomes available as a channel that God can use to bless someone else or to help someone else, again, it changes your life. Because you don't even understand how God can use you until you're available for him to do that. And, and I'm telling you, what he does, and it, it has so, uh, I can't even tell you, what it does in your life, you become less focused on you, you become more focused on others. There's a whole lot of things that happen. And I want to remind us of what the Apostle Paul told us in 1 Corinthians 12. This is what he said. He said, there are different ways to serve, but we serve the same Lord. And there are different ways that God works in people. But it's the same God who works in all of us to do everything. Something from the Spirit can be seen in each person. The Spirit gives this to each one to help others. There's something in you that needs to be shared with other people. And that's just a fact. Now, I know some of you, again, you're like, wow, that man, that's great. I just don't have time right now. Do you know what's amazing about everyone that pulled off this service this morning? They don't have time either. It's amazing. They're not sitting around looking for stuff to do, like walking around kicking rocks, being like, I wonder if they need help. Like, no one's doing that. We're busy people. We have kids and lives and families and, and schedules and deadlines and everything the same as you. But, why, what, but what's the difference? They made time. Why did they make time? Because serving other people and allowing God to be a channel in your life makes a huge impact on your life. And I'm telling you, once you do that, you don't go back. You're like, no, I've got to help somebody. I've got to just not always my life be about me. I gotta give an hour or two hours a week and just be about others because I've gotta get grounded in why I'm here again. I'm telling you that if you will give God your time at any time at all, it'll be the most meaningful time that you spend all week. I don't know anybody that goes and serves in our food pantry and says, that was lame. That was so dumb helping all these people. Ugh, I'd rather be home watching Netflix. Nobody says things like that. Nobody comes in and, and greets and serves coffee in the morning and tries to help people because, you know, we don't always walk in smiling, right? You look kind of sad and stuff, and then you start smiling when people come up and greet you. Nobody's like, man, I hate, I hate just greeting people. I hate welcoming people and just making them feel, I just hate that so much. Nobody says that. Like, no, it's a great experience. It's the most meaningful time you spend all week. If you will give God your talents, you have no idea how God could use you. You really have no idea. Until you just say, God, okay, I'll step out. I'm scared. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll do this. I'm telling you, God takes it from there. And I'm going to add this. If you give your resources, it's the best investment that you make, period. Period. And I'm going to argue that in a minute. But this is what, and that's what I mean when I say the other word. So we talked about involved. I want to talk about the word invested. And some of you are like, ooh, bathroom break, because he's going to talk about money. I feel it. And, and <laughs> what do I mean when invested? Invested is simply this. It's just giving my resources to help other people. That's all it is. It's pretty simple. Giving my resources to help other people. But then people are like, oh, oh I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about that. Can I, can I tell you, before you run for the door or canoe home, in the middle of this message because whatever. Listen to me. Number one, we understand that any topic about finances makes some people uncomfortable. We get that, okay? We're not we're gonna make it worse, okay? Two, in our current economy, it's extremely difficult to give anything. We get it, okay? So just know that out the door. Relax, okay? We get it. And this is honestly, I don't even have to teach on this because it's a tension that you gotta deal with at some point. I'm telling you right now, if you spend any time in the scriptures, many, many times, you're gonna be challenged to honor God with what you have, period. You can't avoid it. You can run, but you can't hide, right? It's gonna be there. And what I'm saying is everything that we have, every blessing we have comes from God. And at some point, you gotta deal with the fact that God asked us to give back to the giver. 
And if there's anybody I want to give to, it's the giver, right? For sure. That, that, that's a principle. It's a tension that at some point you, you, you can't escape it in Scripture. I don't even have to teach it this week. It's going to be sitting there for you. And, and my thing is, at some point you have to decide what to do about that. You have to decide, like, am I actually going to do this and what's going to happen and how much, to, what, what do we do? I get it, okay? Let me tell you what our goal is as a church. Our goal is to make sure that we are diligent with every single dollar and that we make sure that if you're giving, that it's making an impact. Now, some of you will be like, well, I'd like to see, I'd like to see that. Like, you know, like, what, like, describe that for me. Well, let me give you an example, okay? If you gave anything in 2023, can I tell you what you helped make happen? Just a couple things. Number one, I mentioned this earlier, our food pantry, which we talk about a lot, it's the second largest food distribution center in the county. Every week we give away 8,000, yeah, you can clap for that. And a lot of our leaders are here that, that help with that this week, glad to see, and let me say something, 8,000 pounds of food a week. That's a lot, okay? And, and, and that's hundreds of local families. We can't even keep track of how many families we're actually, we've tried to like count multiple times, hundreds of local families. So that's one way. Two, we have an after school program at Galt School called Kids Club that's led by volunteers. And we also help Galt School by providing Christmas for families in need. Three, we provided, I don't know if you know this, in December, we provided 200, over 200 coats for people in our community. I mean, that's crazy, right? Four, I'm not done, I'm not even close, okay? Four, we hosted a Christmas party for the Santa Cruz uh, um, foster care system. Every year these kids come, you get gifts, and families, we bless, it's just an incredible opportunity. Five, we're an available shelter, our buildings, for during the winter storms, during the things that happen. Six, we do provide tutoring space for the Santa, uh, Volunteer Center Literary Project. Kids that are learning how to read, we provide tutoring space for them. I don't even know where I left off. Seven, we support women in need in our community through the Pregnancy Resource Center. Eight, we support missionaries and who are being trained and, and support them through Communitas. That's Paul and Carrie, Karen Hensey. And, and, and they do an incredible work here to bless people who are going all around the world and do that. And if you want to talk about global stuff, we even do a little bit of that. I mean, uh, nine. You're supporting medical, educational, pastoral r r resources and training through UCI in Haiti. And I don't know if you know a lot about Haiti, but it's going through it right now. And you're helping make a massive impact there. I mean, 10 in Indonesia, which is a, I mean, a very, very unreached community in there. Jim Yost and the work he's doing there, providing disaster relief. So, I mean, that's 10 but let's go one more. Let's talk about what we're doing right now. You also help provide 52 church services every year to help people find hope and, and experience the love of God and find hope in Jesus. And those are things you're making happen. And, and, and we're not even done. We'd like to add two more this year, and I'll tell you more about that later. We don't even have time in the message to even talk about it. But here's what I'm saying. Those are all ways that I listed, 11, that you can get involved and you can be invested. Now, I know what you're saying. Well, Matt, that's a lot of bang for your buck. I'm going to start tithing today. That sounds great. <laughs> I appreciate that. And you can do that, by the way, if you do want to give at santacruzbible.org slash give. You should do that all the time. You know what I do? I automate it so that I know that every two weeks, something of mine is going towards someone else to help them. I get it, but here's what I am saying. Investing in life change is the best investment you'll ever make, period. Investing in literal life change is the best investment. And let's be honest about our stuff. I know we're so worked up about our money and our stuff. And you can't take this stuff with you when you're in the end, right? So why don't you put it to work while you're still here? and build a legacy of doing good and helping others and blessing others. Just something to put out there. Now, if you've been a while, been here a while, here's something else you know before we leave the topic of invested, okay? Because some of you are like, please get off of it quickly, but eh, I got a little bit of money. 
If you've been here a while, you know that even with all that I just listed, all these ways we're serving the community, that our church has been struggling financially for the last few years especially, okay? I don't know, again, if you've ever turned around any organization, if you've ever had to do that in your career, but let me tell you, (laughs) the finances is the last and the hardest hurdle of doing that. It's hard, hard, hard to do. In the last three years, our church has become spiritually healthier, culturally healthier, but financial health is always the slowest part of the deal, and and it's the slowest part of getting a church going in the right direction. It just is, okay? It's just a fact fact of life. And since we just finished 2023, I'd like to take a second and give you a report on how we're doing, because I get that question a lot. Well, how are we doing financially? Can you tell us about that? I would like to do that. Now, if you're new, okay, this may seem for just a minute, okay, like inside baseball, okay? And if you need to check a score or text grandma that you love her, that's fine during this time. I don't care. But just if you will give me a minute, you might actually find some of this information interesting because we get this question a lot. And let me tell you the bottom line of the whole report. Here it is. Bottom line is we are surviving. That's good. But we're not thriving yet. But if we will just keep going and doing what we're doing, we're going to get there. We just, we're hanging in, that, that's it. So here's the quick report, okay? So here's the data behind what I just told you. So since the pandemic, you guys remember that? Just kidding. Anyway, um, <laughs> that'll be funny one day. It's still not now. Anyway, so, uh, so the pandemic. You don't even have to go to church to know this. Churches nationwide have experienced the greatest decline in attendance and giving in recent history. We don't have data that goes back enough to see what we're seeing right now. During, for us, over the year of 2020, Santa Cruz Bible Church lost 60% of its attendance. Then I get here in 2021, we're trying to figure this out, and here's what's happened in 2021 and 2022. And this was literally every church in the country, okay? Everybody was trying to survive off PPP loans and employee retention credit and every kind of assistance you could get while also trying to figure out what remains of your giving base after all this. Because it's not as easy as you might think, because a lot of people moved. You remember that? A lot of things happened. Uh, a lot of people changed. A lot of people stayed home, and we never saw them again, and, and, we, and we don't know what happened. Like, it's, it's a lot harder than it looks. But here's what we did find out. 2023, last year, okay, was the first year with no assistance at all. No training wheels. We're going in, okay? Well, before you clap, let me tell you about how it went. Because (laughs) it's a good thing. We're not relying on Uncle Sam. I get it. Um, But let me tell you some data. So here's what we did to prepare for a year where we have no financial assistance. In 2022, we reduced our budget and expenses by around $480,000. I think it actually says 484. Sorry about that. That's a lot. And then we came into 2023 and let's said, let's see how we do. Well, I'll tell you, we had to reduce our budget and expenses again by $424,000. So I want you to understand something. We're a small church. And in the last 24 months, we've had to reduce our expenses and budgets by over $904,000. That's almost a million dollars to withstand what all has been happening, okay? Now, that is, and and by the way, just to report for now, where do we stand? Last year's giving, the economy ate our lunch. Lowest we've had in a while, 860,000. Our current budget for this year right now is at 996. So that's, that will show you the gap that we have left. That's all we have left to kind of get through these hurdles, okay, And, and push through this stuff. But it's, but it's tough. And let me tell you, how did we get under a million dollars? Let me tell you exactly how we did it. We cut half our staff, which was extremely difficult. And we're still picking up the pieces and trying to figure out what to do with this. We are seeking revenue beyond giving by leasing and renting our spaces. We have what, we, have what we call an oversupply of parking, and we're trying to figure out, is there any parking anywhere that we can sell off? And, do, you know, and, and just to get, get, get going in. If some of you may be wondering this, because I get asked this question all the time, how much does it cost to operate the buildings here? 
about $220,000 a year. If you thought your PG&E bill, PG bill was high, right? To keep our buildings and pay our bills, about 220,000 bucks. And the thing is, had we not, and this is just a fact, okay? I hope I'm not scaring anybody. If we had not issued our financial challenge last year, we would have drained our savings and be in debt. Not one doubt about it. But here's the good news. Thanks to you, we didn't have to do that. Thanks to you, we're in this together and we were able to do that. Now let me talk about our financial challenge for a second and then I promise I'm moving on. Our church came together and raised over $175,000 in the last three months of last year. Isn't that crazy? Now I know, let me, let me, let me address something because that was to try to close the gaps that we were heading into last year. Now I know that was not our goal of 300,000. I'm very aware of that, okay? I do math, I understand it, okay? But here's the thing, you gotta think about this. Raising $175,000 out of 200 people is amazing. I mean, if you do the math, that comes out to around, almost $900 a person. So here's what that means. You gave sacrificially. You stepped up to the plate and it was an incredible blessing. You believe Santa Cruz needs a church like this. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I could not be more proud and more thankful of our community because I know this is not the time to be giving more and doing more, and I get it, the economy and all that, but we came together and pulled that off, and I'm so thankful for you. You, you just have no idea. And now where are we now? Let, let's be truthful. Those things that we put off, they're still slowly happening. Savings is getting low. Savings, our savings is taking a beating these last few years. You saw the numbers, right? And on our staff and our board's end, let me tell you what we're working to do continually. Increase revenue of whatever we can do on this campus and reduce expenses. We're trying to do everything we can to close that gap. On your end, because this is all of us pulling together to continue to do this. On your end, keep giving, give generously. I'm telling you the truth that your giving matters more now than it ever has. It is making a huge difference. And I want to encourage everybody who's been here a long time with a verse that, that, that always comes to mind, Hebrews 10, 35. It says, so do not lose the courage you had in the past, which has a great reward. You must hold on so you can do what God wants and receive what he's promised. Here's the thing. Yes, we're surviving, but folks, we're still here. And I do believe we've gotten through probably the worst of it, but, I, but here's the deal. We will thrive, and we will do this together. And here's what I believe, and I, I believe with all my, I think future generations will be so glad that we fought the good fight, that we hung in there, and we gave them a place where there can actually be hope for everyone. I think they're gonna thank us for that. It's hard, but it may be the greatest gift that we give ahead of us. Thank you, I just wanna say again, thank you for hanging in there. Thank you for giving. We're gonna get there, hell or high water, we're gonna do it. Hopefully the hell and high water parts are over with because I'd like a little less water and a little less heat, okay? But thank you. Guys, I know this may be awkward, but will you give yourselves a hand and thank you guys so much for giving, seriously. Okay, right. thanks for doing that. Again, we're pushing through, we're hanging in there. We're going to see this thing through. I mean, thank God I'm stubborn, right? Because I'm, we're not quitting. We're, gonna, we're going. We're doing it. Thank you for that. That's what being invested is all about. Okay? And if you're new, I appreciate you giving me a minute to do that. Our church tr values communication, transparency, and honesty. We're always trying to grow in that and figure that out. And I hope you, get, you, hope you can see some of that. Here's, let's sum it up. If we're going to be a place of hope for everyone, that means we always find a place for anyone. Again, we are imperfect people with scars, struggles, trying to push forward to whatever God has planned for us personally and whatever God has planned for us as a church. We rely on God's grace every day. There's a place for you here. In some way, somehow, we're going to do it. And, and you need a place to share your life experiences with others and to share your hard moments with others. To share your talents and abilities and to share your questions about life and what's going on. To be generous with your resources and to be generous with your compassion toward people. 
a place where anyone can belong and everyone can find hope. Now, I'm going to tell you how we do this, okay? Two ways today. I just want to invite you, be a part of your church. Don't, don't sit there. Don't, it's not a spectator sport. It's just not as much fun, I promise. Jump in. You'll be glad you did. There's a QR code for those online. You can scan that, or if you're here in this room and you like to scan that and do that, you can scan that anytime, 24 hours a day, and we, we will connect with you. If you got questions or you just want to, like, maybe volunteer for something or you just go, like, I, don't, I just want to talk to someone and maybe they can help me figure out the best way to plug in, we'll do that. We'll do that. We also, if you're on our campus today, after this service, we do a little thing called Connect Sunday where we have opportunities right out there in the lobby that you can find out about, ask questions, make connections. And I would highly encourage you not to bolt to the parking lot, okay, but to hang out over there a little bit, meet some folks, and see if there's an opportunity there for you. It's funny because this week as I've been thinking about these last three years, leading a church through change is extremely hard. There are a lot of books about it, and I think all those guys died from stress, okay? <laughs> but here's the thing. I'm kidding. I don't know what happened to them. But anyway, but here's the thing. I wasn't the only one leading it. The more I've thought about this week, we're leading it together. It's not me. It's not our staff. It's all of us together. It, pulling together to say, listen, we believe. We believe. Our county needs a church like this. We need a place where people can come in and, and just find hope in Christ. Like, that's what we need. And everybody, all of you— you made sacrifices. You've taken leaps of faith. Some of you had to lose things and gain other things, all to try to figure out what God has for us in the future. And I'm going to share this with you. The most encouraging moments I have in this whole journey is when I realize I'm not alone. We're in this together. And when I remember that, man, I, get, I just get so filled with hope. I get so filled with encouragement. But the truth is, we all need encouragement. I'm not the only one. We all need belonging. I'm not the only one. We all need purpose. Everybody who hears my voice needs to know that there's something more to life than just existing and doing the same thing in and out every day. There has to be more to this. And I certainly don't want to get to the end with regrets. And that's why God gave us each other. Because alone we can't do much. But together, together we can live out the love of Jesus and be the light of Jesus and build a place where everyone made by a loving God could finally find hope in him too. So let's keep doing it together. Let me pray for you. Father, I just come to you in this moment um, asking that as we talk about these things, and these are difficult things to talk about, sometimes they're just difficult to articulate. But Father, we thank you for what you did on the cross, your arms outstretched, a love that breaks every barrier. And Father, we find ourselves reminded of how you found us. How much grace we need every day how much your forgiveness and your hope and your mercy and your purpose and, and, and your everything that you do in our lives, how much it means to us. And Father, would you help us to continue to share that love with other people, to be a light to other people, and to do whatever we can to keep the lighthouse running. There's a lot of people out in the sea of life, alone, dark, afraid. And Father, we want them to know that there's a lighthouse in the most unlikely of places. That here in Santa Cruz, there's a place where they can come, belong, find hope, and begin to give that hope to other people. So God, whatever you're calling us to do, Jesus, May we do it, because we're not in this alone. We're in this together. And thank you for bringing everybody here. And may we accomplish the purpose you have for us here in Santa Cruz. In Jesus' name we pray.